Okay. So, last but not least, we have Christine Soon up. She's going to be talking about evidence-based strategies for the prevention of syphilis among gay and other MSM. So, Christine is a prevention and research analysis with analyst with the Center for Communicable Diseases and Prevention Control at the Public Health Agency of Canada in Ottawa. I can't read. Um, her work primarily involves the development of population-specific knowledge, uh, policy and program advice to support evidence-informed prevention and control of sexually transmitted and blood-borne infections. Uh, she has a Master's of Public Health degree from the University of UBC. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so thanks for that introduction. Um, as uh, Josh mentioned, I'm from the Public Health Agency of Canada in Ottawa. And today my presentation is going to be on uh, findings from a review of the evidence that we conducted on syphilis prevention among gay, bisexual, two-spirit, and other, gay, other men who have sex with men. Uh, based on these findings, the agency will be developing a prevention resource um, for uh, population-specific prevention among this population uh, for use by uh, community organizations and public health professionals. So as I mentioned, uh, where I work within the agency, a lot of our core work involves the development of population-specific um, prevention materials, uh, as well as policy and program advice for the prevention of STBBIs. So just a bit of a background um, on syphilis in Canada. Uh, so according to the latest surveillance data available from the Public Health Agency, in 2011, there were over seven, uh, 1,750 reported cases of infectious syphilis. This is compared to 482 cases back in 2002. So that translates to a 232% increase uh, compared to the number of reported cases in 2002. In particular, rates among men, um, males, have increased by almost 300%. In 2011, men accounted for 93.5% of all reported cases in Canada, of which the vast majority were uh, gay and other MSM. Now, with respect to syphilis and HIV co-infection, uh, syphilis infection um, can increase the risk of contracting and tra transmitting HIV. And likewise, syphilis infection can progress more quickly and be more difficult to treat among um, people who are HIV positive. Unlike HIV, syphilis is easily transmitted through oral sex and can be transmitted even when condoms are not used through direct contact with syphilis sores. So in light of the high burden of syphilis among gay and other MSM, the agency recently worked with a contractor to conduct a review of the existing evidence on syphilis uh, prevention interventions among this population. And so based on these findings, as I mentioned, the agency is developing a resource uh, for population-specific prevention for syphilis among this population. Uh, we reviewed um, peer-reviewed articles and the gray literature both in Canada and, in, and internationally with a focus on key determinants of health and promising practices for syphilis prevention. So with respect to determinants of health, Individual behaviors such as condomless sex uh, can lead, uh, that may lead to syphilis infection or other STBBIs are directly and indirectly influenced by a variety of structural, social, and economic factors. An understanding of these underlying causes or determinants of health that impact gay men and other MSM's uh, health is important for effective syphilis intervention among this population. And so to ensure that prevention is informed by this understanding, uh, the resource that we will be developing will highlight some of these key determinants of health that contribute to individual vulnerability to STBBIs. So as you all are aware, stigma and discrimination, including homophobia and heterosexism, are key drivers of syphilis among gay and other MSM. In particular, experiences of stigma and discrimination related to sexual orientation and internalized homophobia significantly contribute to poor health and um, mental illness among gay men. 
Poor mental health outcomes, such as depression, low self-esteem, and anxiety, can impact sexual risk behaviors, such as condomless anal intercourse and substance use, which can then lead to infection uh, to an STBBI, such as syphilis. These experiences can also impact coming out or disclosure processes and be a barrier to accessing um, syphilis and sexual health testing and information uh, services. Male gender norms related to masculinity can stigmatize gay men and other MSM, making them and their partners more vulnerable to syphilis infection. Now this includes gender expectations that may encourage risk-taking behaviors or discourage men from accessing health services. A number of factors also put trans men um, at increased risk for syphilis and other SVBIs, including sharing of injection drug equipment, uh, barriers to accessing health services, and low perceived risk for STBBIs. With respect to culture, culture, race, and ethnicity are important factors influencing vulnerability to syphilis. Um, these factors can shape knowledge, attitudes, and behaviors with respect to sexual health and sexual health behaviors. Individuals who identify with ethnocultural or racialized groups and in addition, as sexual minorities, may experience multiple layers of stigma and discrimination that interact and increase their risk for poor mental health and physical health. For Two-Spirit, Gay, and other Aboriginal MSM, the multi-generational effects of colonization, discrimination, and residential schools also impact health behaviors and access to culturally appropriate health services. Now, while culture can be a barrier to accessing health services, um, many gay and other MSM identify strongly with their ethnocultural um, communities or ethnocultural identity, and culture can also be a source of strength and resilience. Social support from family and friends and community have a large impact on individuals' vulnerability um, to SUBBIs and also influence individuals' sense of belongings um, and can be particularly important um, in the coming out process, HIV disclosure, for example, or medication adherence. As we've heard this morning, and I'm sure in the next two days, uh, we know that internet and social media are also an important source of social support and have changed the way that gay men access health information. The internet has also been an important intervention tool and a means of addressing social isolation and reaching out to gay and other MSM anonymously. And at the same time, the internet and social media uh, can, may contribute to SCVVI risk, through facilitating anonymous sexual encounters, which can be a source of vulnerability to syphilis infection. Having good social support um, and strong relationships with family and friends in the community uh, can help gay and other MSM cope with the stress and, of ne um, and the negative impact of stigma and discrimination. Uh, lower levels of education can create disparities in access to health information and services among this population, uh, which can in turn impact access to condom use, for example, or access to testing and treatment services. Having a lower socioeconomic status can also engender discrimination and further barriers to employment and housing, for example. social and physical environments, uh, gay bars, the internet, bathhouses are some of the many examples of different social venues um, that offer opportunities for socializing and finding sexual partners in the community. So these venues um, influence social mixing patterns which have an impact on vulnerability to syphilis infection and other SCBBIs. Social practices such as anonymous sex, alcohol and recreational drug use may also be a barrier to practicing safer sex. It is important that gay men and other MSM have access to supportive, safe, and gay-friendly environments where they can both socialize and access health services free of discrimination and violence. So tied into that, access to health services, um, bar different barriers to access to health services include, um, as I mentioned, homophobia, discrimination, uh, different geogra geographical locations and proximity of services, 
uh, lack of confidentiality or not anonymity um, also impact the frequency and quality of care that gay men receive. Knowledge and attitudes of healthcare providers can also be a barrier to SCBBI testing and treatment services. Um, these perceived or the perceived stigma, discrimination, and ignorance about the health needs of gay men uh, affect how and whether they seek information and services. And lastly, although many gay and other MSM practice safer sex, uh, transmission of STBBIs, including syphilis, continue to occur, occur among this population. So in the context of HIV, oral sex is a common risk reduction strategy. However, in contrast to HIV, sexual health, uh, sorry, syphilis is easily transmitted through oral sex uh, through direct contact uh, with syphilis sores. So other sexual practices, such as having multiple sex partners, partner finding on social media, use of anonymous partnering venues, such as um, social media or bathhouses, and recreational drug use may also contribute to vulnerability to STVBIs. Research also shows that a large proportion of gay men um, are not concerned about syphilis and have a low perceived risk of syphilis transmission. So based on uh, findings from a review of the evidence, um, we highlight four promising practices in syphilis prevention uh, among gay and other MSM that I'll briefly walk through each of them. So first, some of the most compelling evidence, um, both Canadian and internationally, um, exists for enhanced testing um, of um, of SCBBIs and syphilis among this population. So this includes uh, increased testing frequency for HIV negative gay men um, and other MSM at high risk and also syphilis testing um, as part of routine blood work for HIV positive gay men. So across Canada, there have been a wide variety of strategies to increase testing and treatment, um, including making syphilis, syphilis um, testing available at popular community venues, such as bars, um, bathhouses, and other venues that are fr uh, frequented by gay men, um, in addition to more traditional settings, such as sexual health clinics and through health care providers. At the same time, diagnosing, treating, and curing syphilis among these men means that they can return to a susceptible state where reinfection can, um, may occur. Uh, research and mathematical modeling point out how this can lead, in fact, to a cycle of ongoing infection within a pool of high-risk men. And so this finding emphasizes the need for a comprehensive approach to syphilis prevention, um, one that for example, would include uh, increased partner notification, increased awareness um, to mitigate this effect. Another promising practice is, um, includes the use of innovative approaches to partner notification. So partner notification in, um, typically involves identifying and con contacting sexual partners of a person diagnosed with an STBBI with the goal of encouraging these sexual contacts to be trusted, uh, tested and treated as necessary. Um, sexual contacts may be contacted by the index patient or by public health officials. Um, however, there are a number of challenges associated with this traditional public health approach, including um, the fact that a high proportion of gay and other MSM um, sorry, syphilis transmission that occurs among gay and other MSM um, occurs in casual or anonymous uh, sexual encounters and also in venues uh, such as bathhouses or over social media where identity or location may not be known. So across Canada, there have been innovative strategies for partner notification, including internet-based strategies. Um, these strategies use uh, email or online notification um, to let sexual contacts um, and index patients um, know of a potential SCBBI exposure. Internet-based partner notification has been shown to be effective in uh, reaching a broader range of sexual contacts in a timelier and less resource-intensive manner and also has been proven to be more acceptable within the community. Uh, next, another promising practices, practice is increasing awareness among syphilis through targeted social marketing. 
Um, so social marketing um, interventions are typically consumer oriented and use a variety of communication channels um, to reach their target audience, including posters, uh, transit ads, condom and lube packaging, uh, websites and videos, for example. Social marketing campaigns are typically developed through collaboration with a variety of partners, including public health authorities, um, physicians, nurses, gay men's health organizations, um, and other community-based organizations. So in Canada, uh, there have been over a dozen uh, social marketing campaigns, most of which have been uh, tailored and targeted at gay and other MSM. Um, our review uh, looked at a couple of these campaigns. I don't have the time today to go into detail. And then finally, adopting a program science approach in the design, implementation, and evaluation of syphilis prevention um, is a promising practice. So this involves the systematic use of knowledge uh, to inform both program uh, development uh, and imp implementation. And so knowledge for program science can come in the form of epidemiology, surveillance, um, policy analysis, intervention research, um, in addition to program monitoring and evaluations. So um, a key component of program science involves the use of systematic and rigorous program evaluations and monitoring to not only identify knowledge gaps for researchers, but also to inform uh, future cycles of program development and improve public health results. Um, for frontline program developers, what this uh, boils down to is ensuring that programs are um, informed by evidence of what's happening in the local context, um, as well as best practices or promising practices in how to most effectively intervene. Some of the benefits of a program science approach include the facilitation of evidence-based priority setting um, and allocation of scarce resources. So for example, funding for community-based organizations. As well, a program science approach supports more coordinated response, um, coordinated, efficient, and effective response. So, in conclusion, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, it is important for public health professionals um, and frontline providers to consider uh, the social, structural, economic factors that increase gay and other MSM's vulnerability to syphilis and other sexually transmitted and bloodborne infections. Uh, reducing the burden of syphilis infection among this population involves and requires a comprehensive approach, so one that involves upstream primary, uh, secondary and prevention, uh, ter and tertiary prevention. Um, as I mentioned, the agency uh, will be developing a resource based on these findings and it is expected to be released next year. That's it. Thank you.